tell me I can't be a drunk and own a gun. Tell me where the law says that. We got you on record. Tell me where it says that. Anyway, I just, I find that, I don't know why that offends me. We are the Armed Attorneys. We're talking today about a new resource, I roll, uh, that the Department of Justice has launched to aid cities and states in emergency protective orders. We're going to be talking about kind of what the purported goals of the program are, how they're implementing it, and some horrifying examples. Um, I mean, absolutely jaw-dropping stuff uh, that we can expect, and this is the kind of stuff you have to know about because so goes New York and California, so goes the rest of the nation, and you got to be aware of it in order to combat it. But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And today we are talking about what? So we're talking about red flags, which are, um, you know, unfortunately uh, growing in size and scope throughout the country and are problematic for us because we have a large number of people who can apply for these orders and they violate our substantive due process rights by giving a judicial officer the opportunity to suspend your constitutional rights based on a very low standard, which is clearing convincing evidence for what reason we don't always really know which is what makes them a violation of substantive due process because these are incredibly vague and it seems like um, very low level allegations with very little proof can actually lose you your second amendment rights and they're in the news right now richard because the biden administration has um funded this gigantic operation to help promote all the states who have red flags right yeah, they've launched the National Extreme Risk Protection Order Center now. Um, like Emily said, I mean, really, they've just poured a bunch of money into creating this repository of model legislation and resources. And they break it out from um, litigants to uh, law enforcement, judicial officers, attorneys. They're saying, hey, who's right? Who, who are you? And we'll show you how to take people's rights away. And so um, it's kind of a... Uh, choose your own adventure of nightmare hellscape dystopian constitutional rights violations as far as i can tell yeah how do you really feel though <laughs> but uh you know purported goal is to stop gun violence um and why i think red flag yellow flag all these flags are kind of not a good idea is because they target guns instead of dangerous individuals you're going to say this person is so dangerous, we have to take all their guns away. So you're going to take this guy, kick the beehive, take all of his guns away and be like, all right, have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Like there's not some other way that, uh, you know, you're saying this person is a maniac, is going to go hurt somebody. Um, I, I don't see that their intent is actually based in trying to help people. No, uh, it would appear not. And so what we have is as part of this program, a suggestion I suppose, to all of the states who are participating that they use a form very similar to that which is used by the New York State Unified Court System. Um, and The bastion of freedom and liberty. So free. So um, this is a horrifying form. Horrifying. Um, let's, I mean, I think we should start just throwing it up there on the screen for people yeah. to see. But before, you know, and just so you, you know, people always say, oh, slippery slope, slippery slope. Uh, this is the slipperiest of slopes. You know, when we looked at red flag laws, you know, going back a couple of decades, it was always a sworn declaration by a police officer or peace officer to a judicial officer who would have to make this evidentiary finding and then make an order. Um, and then we've seen slowly that pool of people who can apply for these orders expand. Maybe it's not just police officers. Maybe it's friends or relatives of the target well then it could be anybody and then maybe we don't have to swear to these declarations and then maybe a judicial officer doesn't even have to review it so we see they kind of got their foot in the door and have gone bananas with this and i think the new york form is just a great example of that that it is so here we go we've got your um your mad libs of um <laughs> a petition to the court and i will tell you just we'll just go ahead and throw this up there what really offends me about this and what really tells you that they are highly highly invested in getting people to red flag other people is that it is incredibly difficult to pursue something pro se 
incredibly difficult. Yeah. I have, I mean, for for non-attorneys who successfully litigate their own cases, I have nothing but respect because it is hard. And there are lots of things that we all as just decent citizens deserve and need that the government does not give us sweet little forms like this to do. And if you're going to do it pro se, you're going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and maybe never get it done correctly. Or you're going to spend thousands of dollars on an attorney to just sort of do something that you really deserve to have done as opposed to this, which they are just so excited for people to do that they have made it as easy as humanly possible it yeah, is we were talking about it off camera just expunctions yes expunctions like if you are your case was dismissed you should get your records destroyed and thrown out and there shouldn't be any trail of this because you were legally innocent mm -hmm. if you do it wrong as a pro se litigant not only do you not get your records see you know destroyed it removed off your record well if you fell on one of these legal landmines that because the system is designed full of landmines to punish pro se litigants, um, you are never entitled to an expunction. At least that's the case in Texas, which is, oh, that's also a horrifying sidebar, get off soapbox, but back to this. Um, yeah, this is designed for just regular people. Mm -hmm. So this is our um, checkbox to remove rights. So here we have, you can see, oh my goodness, so easy. You just write the names in. Are you a police officer, district attorney? Are you a family member? Are you a school principal? Are you, I, I don't know, do you have a pulse? I mean, there there are, right, there are lots and lots of options here as to who can bring a red flag order. Um, and then this page is probably the most horrifying. This yeah. is page two. Yeah, so we have the kind of petitioner states it almost reads kind of like when you see those boilerplate search warrants mm, kind of mm -hmm. reads like that where it's like check reason for why you can kick the door down um i mean that's kind of the list that we have here i think we should just go through them sure petitioner alleges the above name respondent is likely to engage in conduct that would result in serious harm to self or others as defined in mhl 9.39 a2 and petitions to the court to issue a temporary extreme risk protection order against the respondent pursuant to cplr 6342 based upon the facts and circumstances set forth in the following sworn application justifying the issuance of the order to wit before i even get there i will say how convenient that you just don't even have to allege that this satisfies the standard because just the form tells you already that you've already satisfied the standard. Yeah, that's which is nice. great. That's convenient. Very convenient. Petitioner believes the respondent is likely to engage in conduct that would result in serious harm to self or others because the respondent has engaged in, exhibited, or committed the following behaviors or acts. Check all that apply. And some of these, you know, they would make sense. Some of these don't make sense so a threat or act of violence or use of physical force directed towards self the petitioner or another person a violation or alleged violation of an order of protection a pending charge or conviction for an offense involving the use of a weapon a pending charge hmm, hmm that sounds like a, it, guilty until proven innocent it does sound like you're guilty until proven innocent the reckless use display or brandishing of a firearm rifle or shotgun don't see any carve out there for self-defense mm -mm, nope. so if you defend yourself then you get a tro that's really convenient when you defend yourself against somebody attacking you, mm -hmm. um, and you let's say you stop the attack by brandishing a firearm, great. Always use the least amount of force necessary to stop the threat. Um, let's say you don't even get charged, but they say, this guy wants mm -hmm. revenge on you. Yep. This guy brandished a gun at me. We should he, go take all of his guns away. Take his guns away. A history of violation of an extreme risk protection order. Evidence of a recent or ongoing abuse of controlled substances or alcohol. Am I here? I'm getting on a weird soap soapbox here, but here we go. Are you going to say you have a right to hug your toilet? I'm going to say you have a right to hug your toilet and own guns. It is. <laughs> we used to have a judge who'd say you could get. What did he say? Rip roaring toilet hugging drunk. Yeah. In your own home. <laughs> Um, so uh, here we go. So yes, controlled substances. Um, you cannot be an unlawful user of certain controlled substances when you buy your 4473. That's under federal law. That is what it is until it's not anymore under Bruin. But, um, tell me I can't be a drunk and own a gun. Tell me where the law says that. We got you on record. <laughs> tell me where it says that. Anyway, I just, I find that, I don't know why that offends me. Well, this is the is one. Is it because that... my fridge full of Chardonnay? Maybe. Chardonnay all, right, all day. 
Uh, but this is the one that offends me the most. Evidence of recent acquisition of firearm, rifle, shotgun, or other deadly weapon or dangerous instrument or any ammunition thereof. So There was a sale on ammo, and now Richard's got a protective order. Well, if you're going to say, hey, this person's a threat, I mean, this also reminds me of kind of family law courts where they call it the palace of perjury, where everybody's just looking to get revenge on each other. So you mm -hmm. got your revenge-likely person, and it's like, you know what? He bought a gun. Therefore, we should take all of his guns away. I mean, that's what this form is saying. Yeah. Or, I mean, just like think about like, hey, there's going to be an ammo shortage in a couple months. I know that because I'm watching the state of what's being produced and it's pretty cheap right now. And so I'm going to go buy as much nine millimeter ammo as I can get my hands on. Boom. Boom. Ordered. You They're lost all your guns. Acquired thereof. It just it's it is insanity, and then of course um, any other relevant factors the court should consider, and then you know give your give your facts and circumstances. This is your this is your insert for perjury right here. Yeah, right. You write down your facts and circumstances. So um, this is, and there are some other I think highly questionable parts of this form. Can we link it? Yeah, yeah, we'll link that description so you can see. Um, you know, lists for letting people, you know, know exactly what sort of firearms person has, a request that uh, the search be executed any time of the day or night without notice. Um, there are all sorts of offensive parts to it, but um, nothing more offensive than just the blanket encouragement of taking people's rights away, which is what this is. Yeah, and part of this is Overton Window. Like, if this is within the allowable discussion of you how... I love an Overton window. I do love a good Overton window. But if this is in the window of allowable discussion when it comes to infringing on Second Amendment rights, we are not in a good place. We are not in a good place. I just... I, I am... <sighs> the double standards in the world we live in is just shock. So let's, let's imagine if Texas's abortion bounty law... If the state of Texas created such a form so that you could report someone you thought was getting an abortion, what would the other side say about that? I don't think they'd be able to talk because their head would explode. But that's, I mean, it, it, it is just, it is just the hypocrisy is what gets me. Yeah. It's the hypocrisy. Five minutes later. All right, so that spicy rant that probably just got cut from the video of mine is now over. Um, all right, so um, just keep your eye on this National Resource Center for Extreme Risk Protection Orders. Um, I did not think that they were going to do something as bad as they have here by just providing this as an example to other states. So it is something we need to continue to watch I and mean, hopefully something that will lose its funding in fairly short order. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the two-way algorithm by sharing this video. And please continue to question and comment for us below. Until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.